Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This morning we're going to be investing in casting a ceramo metal restoration. In front of us here is a lot of the equipment we're going to need to do this operation. Already we've sprued this wax pattern. And if we get up close to it and take a look at it, this is from the previous procedure. You can see that we've invested it, uh, sprued it here. And you can see that the little ribbing on the surface of it is placed to help do several things. One is direct gold up into the casting and of course give our casting some rigidity here, the wax pattern, before it's invested. As we look all around it, you can see the attachment to the sprue is nice and smooth. No roughnesses. And it's ready now to paint our wax pattern cleaner or what you have, the bubbleizer on the inside to help make our investment conform to this wax pattern and nicely wet the surface of it so we have a good adhesion of the mold to the wax. We're going to paint all sides and we can even paint the outside if we desire to get a better adaptation there also. Any pooling now we don't want to have happen so we'll clean that out of the incisal edge. The next step now is we're going to have a casting ring here and in this ring you can see we have our paper liner already placed and the liner doesn't have any gaps in it if anything it slightly overlaps itself. With this liner now already wetted, not soaked, but just nicely wetted, we adapt it to the sides of the ring and place it over our wax pattern, make sure it's firmly in place, and now set this aside. We're going to have special bowls that we can mix our investment in that we'll provide for you. And in these bowls now, we're going to be mixing this special phosphate bonded investment. This is different than the gypsum investment you've used before. This investment now we need to have, since this burnout temperature in the metal is going to be a lot higher than the gypsum bonded investment can withstand. When we do this now, this investment is going to be very hard, but in mixing it, you can see some differences. Right away, it's this dark color. And we're going to be mixing about a 60 gram packet here with the liquid that it needs. Now the liquid comes in several forms. It's not straight water. There's a concentrate that you mix with water. This concentrate, the more you add, the more expansion you get in the investment. We're going to be using 7 milliliters of concentrate and 4 milliliters of water. And this will make up our total liquid that we're going to place in the powdered investment. And so now here we have added the four milliliters of water. And with this concentration, we'll have the right expansion for your casting so it'll fit back on the dies. Now that we have the powder already in our pre-moistened bowl, we're going to pour the concentrate, which is the concentrate pink liquid with the water, into the bowl. We're going to mix it here just to blend it together. It always looks like there's never enough water to mix the whole powder and get it moistened, but as you mix, the reaction gives off water, and all of a sudden, there's plenty, more than you need. So we'll mix this together fully and get ready now to vacuum mix it. So we'll set the spatula aside, hook up our vacuum, and, and to form vacuum now, we're going to have to place our palm of our hand over the opening where the casting ring would go in. So we'll turn on the vacuum mixer, put the palm over the opening, and put it up against the vacuum spat. And now we're going to mix this for about 15 seconds under vacuum. Look up at the vacuum gauge, make sure you're drawing vacuum, and go ahead and mix for the 15 seconds. Once that's happened, separate, but continue to hold it under vacuum for about 10 more seconds. What's happening, your, 
you're pulling off ammonium gas bubbles that you don't want trapped alongside your wax pattern. So the vacuum now is pulling off those bubbles and in 10 seconds it's done it. We'll disconnect, come over and lightly vibrate, separate the unit, and we're ready now to hand invest. A little different than what you're doing on the pin ledge, but we're going to hand invest and paint this phosphate bond investment down alongside the wax pattern, not touching the wax pattern, and let it just lightly vibrate down inside it. Take your time, small increments. Don't fill it up so you trap an air bubble in there. And let it just lightly drip in there, cover the whole inside. Don't touch the wax pattern. And now we'll continue on and lightly paint the outside of the wax pattern just to make sure we have a, a good adaption of the investment to the side of the wax. Do the lingual also, as well as the labial. And now we'll go ahead and put the ring back on, tilt it to one side, and pour the investment along the side of the casting ring, not onto your wax pattern, and let this slowly fill up, going a little slower when it finally goes into the wax pattern, and then fill on up to the top. Now this investment doesn't go in a water bath. You just set it on the bench top once you've finished and let it cure. Quickly clean out the rest of the investment before it sets up in your mixing bowl. And after one, hour, uh, one half hour, it's ready to separate. Notice how hard and shiny. And we're going to scrape that surface to remove that shiny coat and remove this rubber former at the bottom. It's clean. We get all the little particles out of this. Make sure it's perfectly clean on the intake area. You can see the smoothness to our former. And now we can take this and set in our cold oven, not, not warm at all, and we're going to slowly raise the oven temperature up to 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this oven, we're presetting it for 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. No matter what your oven is, that's the temperature this investment will burn out at. And we'll leave it at temperature once it reaches 1,300 degrees for one hour. We can now move over to the casting machine and get ourselves ready since one hour is almost up and wind this machine three to four times, depending on the spring pressure of each unit. This one took four turns. And we'll pull back the stand to make room for our ring and place in a new non-contaminated crucible into the casting machine. Notice there's no paper liner, and this crucible is only used for this type metal. We'll place our four penny weights of W1 metal in there. That's that silver palladium made by Williams. And we're ready to cast. We're going to first now have to use a different apparatus than you're used to. We're going to need to use oxygen mixed with gas to get up the temperature to melt this metal. And the first thing we're going to do now is turn up the gas, the oxygen, and use this regulator on the unit. So we'll open the main valve and let the oxygen flow into the regulator unit and slowly turn in the regulator control until we get up to 6 PSI pressure. With 6 pounds of pressure in our line now and the gas turned on, we're ready to light the torch. And in lighting this torch, the first step is we only light the gas, not the oxygen. So if the gas turned on, we'll light that. 
and then next slowly bleed the oxygen into the gas. And as we turn it on first, we'll clear out the, the oxygen line of any normal air that's trapped in there, and slowly then the oxygen will come in and ignite with the gas, and you'll see a change in the flame immediately. And as we reduce the oxygen and the gas, the tips of the little points on the orifice of the flame will shrink to about a half to a quarter of an inch long. This is the right shape for a gas oxygen torch. We can now slowly start he heating the crucible around the gold to get it warm, and then we'll slowly progress onto the metal itself. You can see the edges of the crucible starting to turn orange, and we know that it's starting to get the heat we need. And we're slowly going to progress now down to the metal and heat it. It's very important at this point for the operator or anyone around to be wearing sunglasses. The, the light given off is quite bright, intense, and can damage your eyes. So as we start heating, we can see the gold take up now, the shiny color. And we have to wait a while and it'll slowly round, form a ball, and the surface of it will be very mirror-like. And as it balls here, we're getting close to the casting temperature of this metal that's up near 2,400 degrees. Now you can see the mirror-like surface on it the shininess, and we're about ready to reach up into the oven, bring down the casting ring, and place it in our casting machine here. Keeping the torch on it, keeping the heat up, we quickly pull back the arm and let it go. No time's lost letting that ring sit in the machine. After spinning for several minutes, we can now take out the ring and look at the end of it. We can make sure it's smooth, shiny, and there'll be a dull appearance on the end, probably a red color if you look at it. Now after letting it sit for five minutes, we can quench it in water. The water quenching this phosphate bonded investment allows us to remove it from the ring much easier than if we let it completely cool to room temperature. And we'll dig down until we hit that paper liner we placed in there, all the way around the circumference of this ring. And we'll dig in from one end till we hit the paper liner, turn around and we'll dig in from the other end till we hit the paper liner. And now we can just slide this investment straight out of the ring, making it much easier. It breaks down a lot faster since we immersed it in water. And with one slot down the side, this will usually split the investment and allow us, just with finger pressure, to break this away from our casting. And we can clean the big chunks off. Clean it up and we can start to see the shape of our casting the reservoir, the sprue, and we can see we have a good casting at this point. We're ready to clean it up, and this is, has only been cleaned with a, a toothbrush under water, and we're ready to take it up to our sandblasting machine and clean out all the small parts of investment that are left up inside it. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.